What is up, everyone? For those in the U.S., hopefully you had a great MLK Day and Inauguration Day for that, for those that have watched. Um, first off, before I get into this video, I want to say thank you uh, to everyone that has subscribed, liked, comment, shared, and watched the videos. I just got over the first hump of monetization, a little under a thousand hours for the 4K mark um, for that to be complete. So hopefully we get that, that knocked out soon. Um, so I'm in the process of getting that stuff uh, completed so I can put on the channel, a little shop, some swag, uh, Patreon to get built out so I can do some of these videos because I don't want to get them taken down um, like <laughs> Advent of Cyber Day 1. So uh, for today's video, I got asked this over and over. A lot of people want to get into cyber. A lot of people hit me up this week and surprisingly out of nowhere uh, on LinkedIn, um, me being born in 1982 over 40 years old. Is it too late to get into cyber? I'm going to give you guys my answer right now. So let's get into this video. So is over 40 too late to get into cyber? My answer is hell no. Now I am not a doctor. I am not telling you to do anything, take anything. I'm going off of my experience on how I transitioned officially fully into a cyber role because I was always a hybrid. Um, I'm going to go give you guys about what I did even before that. Um, the whole nine, right? But I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you guys to take anything. Um, I'm just going to give you guys my experiences and what I've done uh, to keep me going, um, you know, and instead of getting older, getting younger. So number one, you are not too old to get into cyber. The only thing I will say just right off the bat, not even knowing you, seeing you, what your history is, your experiences, is you have to want it. You're going to have to prioritize, change some things up because you are going to have to hit the ground running and get a basic and build a basic foundation of whatever path and niche you want to go into cyber now. If you're coming new with no experience, saying you're, um, say if you're like plumber, mechanic, HVAC, you have to come with the basic understanding of cyber. So Linux, networking, you're pretty much going to have to start over to a degree, not saying you're not going to be able to pick up anything fast. However, if you're coming into like HR, finance, workplace services, where you have procurement, program project management that is a bit different because you can utilize that skills to get your foot in the door into cyber now it might not be the niche or area of cyber you want but that's your foot in the door to later build up learn skills on the way from both blue red team incident response um dfir whatever whatever route you want to go um grc to build and learn those skills, to be able to transition in a year, year and a half, three years, however long it takes you uh, to be comfortable to attain that skill set knowledge. So, um, again, if you're coming off new, no experience in cyber, you are going to have to put in work. So being in some of those trades and other career fields as well is very, I'll bring up finance, quarter end, year end are really rough. Um Long hours throughout those weeks. Uh, I know because when I was at Tessera before I got permed, I started off in finance, accounting, and uh, stock stock administration, believe it or not. So that was early, early, end of 2004, beginning of 2005 before I transitioned to March and got offered the full-time role. So knowing that is really, really strenuous. However, you're going to have to put in time and work in order to build those skills. And that goes for the trades as well. Those are could be demanding most of those times are going to be working at, uh, at least where I'm from, tech companies. So they don't want all, you know, all the tools and noise of the constructions or stuff getting rebuilt, added. A lot of those times you're going to be working odd hours. So you're going to be tired, but you got to put in the work um, to be into cyber. And things move fast. So you cannot waste time. You cannot lag. You really, really, really do have to want this. Um, that would be my number one. Um, I guess, number one thing going forward in parallel, if you have no experience or you have something to bring to the table to get your foot into the door, number two, 
My recommendation would be in decent shape. And I say that because it could be a lot. I don't mean being a bodybuilder, uh, marathon runner, triathlete, anything like that. What I'm saying is being, take care of your body, healthy, um, you know, eating, diet, good cardio. Um, you know, again, you don't have to be a marathon runner. Just have your mind and your body right physically, because if not, um, it can be strenuous depending on which route you go. Uh, you know, and again, everything is perfect until something happens, right? So a lot of people, if you do tabletop exercises, certain meetings, um, you have, you see a lot of people who like to hear themselves talk, um, are in certain roles that, you know, think they're, I'll just say it big and bad. But until there's an actual incident or a SHTF scenario incident that happens, they are the first to run back or back out the gate, back uh, hit the back door running down the stairs because they are afraid to make a, a decision that requires a lot of stress. They could lose their job. It could go on their resume. So you're going to have to deal with a lot of stuff like that. You know, if there's an incident, if someone got fished, now there's a third actor into, the, into your environment. Uh, 24 seven incident response, you know, that stuff could be really, really impactful on your body and your mind, especially if you've never been in those type of situations before. So that's where I say have good, good cardio, being able to manage stress well, being able to, you know, do that kind of job, whether it's everything's going good, your day to day, or if there's an actual incident, that would be my number two, you know, recommendation is to have that in place. Now, for me, a lot of people would say I'm overboard, but that's fine. Um, my workout routine and stuff like that is different. Because I was taking um, uh, steroids when I was younger, when I was 16, um, I have to be on TRT for the rest of my life. My testosterone levels were, I think, at 228. The last test I had last November Um and I'm also on peptides. So now these are done by my doctor. Um, you know, I mean, I inject myself, but these are given to me by my doctor prescribed. I get my blood work done every three months. And then I get the yearly done in November. Um, I had a genetic uh, blood test. So, you know, I take care of myself and being in the right condition, cardio, um, doing jujitsu, going, um, going to the gym. And then also now doing uh, high rocks training as well. Uh, you know, you don't have to do all that. That's what I do because, you know, I want to compete with the younger guys. Uh, same with jiu-jitsu. I feel my cardio is keen. Um, I will not lose and I will not be outbeat by um, someone having better cardio than me. That is my goal. Um, and I translate that into the work environment. By Nothing will bother me. Nothing will offend me. I will never get mad. I'm always stoic in meetings. I, don't, I won't even talk in meetings unless I, unless I have to. I don't want to show up, um, but I'll never get stressed out for any kind of incident. And if I need to make a stress related uh, decision, time decision, I'm going to make it uh, no hesitation. I'm going to do what's, what my gut feels is right and go with it. Um, whether I, you know, that has me to lose my job or whatever. Um, and this experience, I don't do that now, but when I was in physical security, sometimes we had to do that stuff, especially in 2020 COVID BLM. Um, I stuck to my guns. I didn't leave my morals. Um, so, but if you get into a cyber role, CISO, even a CIO or manager, uh, senior manager for incident response, blue team, SOC, et cetera, you're going to have to make those decisions. Um, if there's, if you're involved in an incident. So that's where the, that stuff comes in. Number three, um, how, how would I say this? Number three would be if you are married in a relationship you have to have that conversation with your partner because cybersecurity is 24 seven, let alone you have to be on top of your game, meaning ahead of the trends and the curves. You always have to be learning, putting in work. Um, you know, for me, if you're offensive security or off, uh, yeah, offensive security, red team, ethical hacking, et cetera, pen testing, you got to put in work. You got to get those practical uh, certificates. It's not studying multiple choice. It's actual practical. You have to be on the computer learning and hacking and then also doing CTFs to stay relevant. So, and then you, if you're a niche or you want to go into a niche like IOT, OT, uh, RFID, 
uh, physical red team, NFC, uh, SDR hacking, stuff like that. Now you're going to even have to study even more for that niche uh, specific um, and get get ahead of the the trends and the curves on that space. So you got your overall, um, you know, pen testing search that you got to get, whether you're their, their up and coming technologies and or they're required by your job, your company organization that you're working at. Then you also got your specialty groups where, you know, and that also includes car hacking nowadays, right? Tesla, Rivian, et cetera, right? or any EV car for that matter. Now you're going to have to be niche specific and get good at that area as well. So it's kind of a twofold. So I say that because it can be hectic on a relationship. Uh, speaking from a man, women want time. Um, but sometimes, you know, the time got to wait. Um, plans change. Um you're always, you're never going to, you're, you're going to have to be move, be able to move around, juggle things around like water, be agile. Right. So, um, sometimes shit happens. You got to get it done. Um, calls sometimes, you know, mainly that's just on the blue team incident response side, but you know, things like that are going to happen. So you have to have those three things in place from my experience. And again, this is from, from my own experience on what I did, what I've seen, um, what I've been through to do the actual transition. But, um, you know, I would give those three, th those three tips right off the bat. Uh, if you got those, those three things down, um, and you're able to do it without any issues, uh, you won't have any setbacks. And I guess the bonus one would be don't go off a of drive. I mean, don't go off of, off of, um, being motivated, go off of drive because drive is going to get you through those times where. You're sick. You don't feel good. You're drained from, let's just say, working out three times a day. Um, you're and you got to get up at 4 a.m. Do your cardio. Come back and study for an hour. I'm giving my my examples on what I do, um, but you got to get it done. Uh, motivation stops after a couple weeks. Drive keeps going and pushes you, uh, you know, to get the job done. Task completed. So those would be my four recommendations. Um, if you're over 40. And, you know, take it serious because once you go um, and you start talking <clears throat> at your job or giving hints, I would keep it quiet. Uh, you know, don't let anyone know your plans, especially at work until you got everything going and you got that offer letter. Then you, I guess, spill the beans, obviously, because you're going to have to, right? Give your two-week notice. And so I would just keep it quiet because usually in those trades, people talk, uh, but talking travels really fast. Um, and I know that just because being in that environment, especially in facilities, workplace services, uh, you'll probably be looked at. And if there needs to be cuts, you're going to be the first one to go. So just keep that silent. Keep it to your chest. Don't share any of that stuff until you get your offer letter. So that's the video for today. Those are my three recommendations plus that last bonus. Um, it's never too late to transfer into cybersecurity. There's ways to keep yourself younger, youthful, um, you know, more energetic than ever before all legal, go to the doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying you need this, but get your blood work done. Uh, you know, that's the best way to go. And you'll be able to take on more and, you know, be more productive throughout your day and not just work, studying, certs, et cetera, but everything else. So that's the video for today. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Go Notre Dame.